got cat through my mouth. <laughs> Welcome to Acorn Knits. My name is Natalia. I'm knitter based in Sydney, Australia, and this is just my little nook on the internet where I like to talk about all my knitting. Now, once again, it has been a really long time since my last upload. I think, is it almost six months? I don't know, it's pretty bad. Uh, so thank you for your patience, but I have been really, really busy since we last caught up. So I think I'm just gonna rapid fire pretty much through everything I've been making and that I've made. I may forget some yarns, I may forget the pattern names, if there's anything that just slips out of my mind, I'll put everything in the description bar below. I also want to thank, there was a viewer that made a comment in my video I did about the everything I knit in 2022 roundup, um, I'll put that somewhere up here, but they mentioned if I had Ravelry, and at that time I was really bad at pretty much posting anything on my Ravelry. I'm still not great at it, but I am getting a lot better. So I'll link that below and you can see my project pages. So anything I chat about here generally should have a product page up there. So um, yeah, check it out. So because I have no memory of when I did everything, this is not going to be presented in chronological order. I've just got a stack of knits in front of me. I'm just going to pick them up and we're going to chat about them. So I'll grab Actually, before I grab up the pile, I'll talk about what I'm wearing because I haven't even chatted about this. Uh, this is the, I believe it's called the Robinson Wrap Cardigan. Um, it's by Florence Miller. She's also a YouTube um, knitwear, podcaster, designer, all around amazing person. And she designed this cardigan. It is a long sleeve, very fitted wrap cardigan. I'll sit up a little bit higher. Um, so has I cord a uh, little edging of a thing. It wraps around behind it, like underneath the back of it. So you can't actually see the strap pull around. And mine is knit in Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair, which I've never actually knit together. I've knit Knitting for Olive Mohair with things and I've knit with um, the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, but I'd never used their Merino before. And the combination is absolutely divine. Something that kind of breaks my heart about it is that Knitting for Olive, on the label it will show you that the Merino at least is sourced from Australia, but, which I'm living in Australia, and you can't find Merino like this here locally. It just seems a shame to have to send Merino off from Australia to Denmark, actually probably to Italy to be spun, then to be sent to Denmark to then have it sent back to Australia. It seems a bit wild. If there's any Australian knitters who can recommend a local yarn that is just like Knitting for Olive Merino, I would love to hear it. Um, Cause there are, I mean, look, with that said, there are amazing local Merinos. It's just, that Knitting for Olive one, it's just, you know, it's not super wash, it's soft, but it's not really like scratchy. It's not, it's perfect. It's, it's an ideal combination. If you haven't knit with the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Mohair combined, chef's kiss, it is amazing. I would highly, highly recommend. But also this pattern is a joy to knit. I think it took me mm, maybe about three weeks or so. Um, very straightforward. I believe she also has at least a tutorial about how to do the double knitted border. Um, I had never applied a double knitting border before and I did find that helpful to watch um, for sure. Even though the instructions are quite clear, Something that's a very new to me technique. I always love to see someone do it first. So I really appreciate she got that video up. But yes, that's just the Robinson knit. Stunning, really, really love it. So before I move on to the next item, which actually happens to also be made from Knitting for Olive, Silk, uh, silk Mohair and the Merino. Um, as for the colorways, I got two different ones. Now, the exact ones are slightly escaping me. I'm pretty sure that the Merino was putty and the Silk Mohair was cloud. And they're, slight, they're not the same color, obviously, but the combination kind of gave this really nice stone color, kind of taupey, grayish. I loved it. I thought beautiful, beautiful combination. Um, really like how that's turned out. But the other item I've made with the same yarn combo was the Petite Knit, I think this is called the Honey Clutch. I always want to think it's called the Honey Bag, but I don't think it is. Uh, it is a drawstring little satchel with I-cord strings, and it's made in honeycomb brioche. So it is knit in the round. And as a result, you do get, where is it? A little seam. 
there we go. So it's sort of kind of obvious where the beginning of round is. And you start by casting on at the bottom, which I don't know if this is just me. Does it look like an urchin or does it kind of look a bit like a butthole? Write in the comments which one you think it looks like. Um, I'll also post a photo of what it was looking like when I was um, casting it on. But then once again, absolute joy to knit. I believe was that, was there double knitting involved? I think there may have been, um, but a really cute project, very quick to do. Uh, I knit several, well I've knit two of the petite knit, or is that called the honey clutch? I'm getting really confused. There's a little zip purse, maybe, <sighs> the names escape me, but I've knit a few of those. I love the pattern, I like the honeycomb brioche, uh, and this is no exception, a really fun little, little pattern to go with. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in there yet. I was gonna use it for some knitting notions. At the moment, it's just holding the yarn that I used for it. Um, both are in the plum rose colorway. So we've got the merino and then the little bit of silk mohair. So in no particular order, I'll go through all the things that I've been knitting since we last chatted. So the first thing on my pile are the Picta socks, which are by Teddy Lutzak, um, also known as Teddy's Knitting Garden or Knit Garden. Um, Amazing knitwear designer based out of the Netherlands, but originally from Ukraine. She does these really beautiful botanical inspired. Um, I mean, the color work is botanical inspired, but I feel like just her entire aesthetic has that really mother earth, natural, stunning, really beautiful. I believe she has a PhD in the study of, is it a fungus or? It's definitely in very tiny particles. <laughs> um, the exact name of it escapes me but um, she is incredible, I love her designs. These were made um, not out of a traditional sock wool, um, they were made with the Studio Donegal Dani, which is 100% wool. I don't even, th I'm a little bit nervous about how much I can wear these because I don't want to walk through them. At least with the color work sections here, you're going to get that doubling up, so you'll get a bit of extra protection as the floats sit on top of each other. But with the heels, I'm just not sure how well they'll wear. And they're really beautiful and I'm worried about wearing through them. So I haven't worn them that much. Um, however, I will say this sh German short row heel that she constructs for it is the best fitting one I've ever worn. There's just an ever so slight modification to how you do the German short row. And it's just seamless along here. I often have issues with getting a tiny little gape sort of hole here. I didn't get that with these. I love the heel construction. I think it's amazing. And um, here we go, it's probably a better way of showing them, isn't it? We've got some guest appearances. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful. Um, the colorways, once again, I'm not 100% sure about. Obviously the navy and beige, they don't have a huge color range, so you can probably find it on their online website, but I will link them below and they'll also be on my Ravelry page for this too. Uh, so very, very cute and really fun. These were so much fun to make. Look, each sock took maybe about a week. Um, I find collar work tends to speed up processes because it's just so addictive and so much fun. Now, another Teti pattern that I finished. Um, now this, I didn't mention the Picta socks were a test knit, as is the next one. At the moment, I think she may be weighing up what she's gonna call it, but um, at the moment it is called the Bifurka vest. Um, I believe it's Latin, it means sort of two prongs. So it is this amazing cropped vest, a really unique design. Um, she refers to it as modular, but essentially you knit all around um, the collar and then sort of grow out from it. Um, you get a really deep V on the front and back. The yarn that I knitted this in was BC Guns, is it Similapura? Uh, Mandarin, um, who's Melody Hoffman, she recently talked about it in one of her videos, which I'll link below, and she raved about it. She was saying how soft and um, just, she, she even suggested you could use it for baby knits. It is a, um, it's a non-superwatch, it's a non-superwatch natural yarn. It is soft, particularly after blocking it really blooms. However, I would not 
so that you could use it for baby garments. You would have to have a pretty robust baby, I think, to not be irritated by this, just because babies are so delicate. I think the majority of people could wear this next to skin, but I think if you're very sensitive, you're not going to be able to. With that said, let me reiterate, it is very, very soft for a non-superwash yarn. Maybe not quite knitting for olive, merino soft, but um, it is lovely. And then as a contrast color, sorry, I should specify, the main color was a B.C. Garn, and the contrast is the Rauma Garn Fennel, which is in the white. I chose a very low contrast um, color work option. Her original one is much more vivid and it kind of reminds me a lot of the Slavic folk costumes um, with that sort of white and kind of like burnt orange red. It's really, really beautiful. Looks amazing on her. Uh, but yes, I went with a lower contrast. It's got some really cute twisted rib details on the um, arm openings, on the V and as well as on the trim. And then it's got the little white um, contrast color uh, trim at the end as well, which is really beautiful. Really stunning piece. Um, it was a lot of fun to knit as well, uh, which, and this one, this pattern will be released by the time this video comes out and the Pictou socks have already been released as well. So um, they're my two Teddy Lutzak uh, patterns. Actually, I'll round it out with a, another test knit that I did. So this one here is the textured rib tee by Thornson Knits, who's Nicole Thornson, I believe, I hope I'm getting the name correct. Um, really fun design. Uh, very simple sort of, oh, let me get that out of the way. Very simple um, texture, it's all knit in the round from the bottom up. Um, slight bit of waist decreasing, like waist shaping. It is quite oversized on me and the shoulders, the sleeves end up being very big on me. I think that had I done it myself, I probably would have reduced it by oof, probably at least a third. It's quite big um, and it looks a little excessive on my arms, I think, but it could also just be the style when I saw other knitters who had finished theirs, um, who were very different sizes to me as well. They also had quite large sleeves. So I think it's just the design rather than an issue or anything like that. Um, or a sizing problem. But yes, very, very cute. Um, I've had my eye on a few of her patterns, and so when the Tessa call came out and I got accepted, it was really exciting. Uh, but yeah, just a very fun fingering weight uh, knit. And with this one, I use the Bendigo Woolen Mills Tranquility, which is a blend of wool, silk, and nylon. So it also did um, grow quite a bit, not a, not a huge amount, but it did grow after I blocked it um, and it gives a little bit more of that drape, which is really lovely. Kind of on that similar sort of summer knits train, when we last caught up I had shown a skein, a skein? Skein. I got called out for saying skein. I'm sorry. When you see something written and you almost never hear it spoken, you just make assumptions. Also, I feel like a lot of people on YouTube say skein, so I've kind of just gotten a habit of saying that. But it's funny that I've said it, I've said it so often that saying skein sounds a little bit wrong. I've been, I don't know, skein. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I will uh, endeavor to improve. Anyway, when we last caught up, I had a skein of the Blue Sky Fibers, um, I think it was just called the Organic Cotton. It's a worsted weight cotton and it is stunning. It almost has a sort of unspun wool kind of texture to it. It's really silky and it's not heavily plied, but really beautiful. It is more than your regular cotton for sure in regards to the cost, but I think it's totally worth it. And what I ended up making with it was the Made You Look Top by um, Ocean Knits, who's Vanessa Fleming. It is so cute. It is such a beautiful top and I used exactly one skein entirely. I wish I had a little bit more that I could have done the corset back. Uh, instead, I did the um, the buttons, which are fine. The only thing is because it is very fitted, 
I put six buttons along the back and they sort of pull out um, and it just makes it look like I'm bursting out of it, uh, which I think is maybe not as flattering as the corset um, detail of sort of having it, an eye cord that's sort of sewn through the back, I think is really nice. Um, the other thing I will say, and once again, not an issue with the pattern at all, this is just the nature of the beast, uh, is that it's twisted rib for the bodice, which is amazing because then it, it really tightens everything in. The thing is, worsted weight cotton in twisted rib, Oh, it is a killer on your hands. My hands really suffered through this, um, which is funny because I never get any sort of hand or wrist pain from knitting. Um, touch wood. <laughs> I'm really thankful for that. But this one definitely did test it. Um, it was fine. It was just a matter of you know not doing it for too long and swapping between different projects. But that is one thing I will warn you is that if you do suffer from um, any sort of wrist or hand pain, just take it slow, um, but it is worth the reward. It is just so cute on the Made You Look Top by Ocean Knits. Another high recommendation. I think it is so beautiful. So what else have I been making? Now, I don't have the biggest stash out there by any means whatsoever, um, but I do still feel that it's, it's too big in the sense of that I have yarn that I just don't see myself using. It was stuff that I bought you know, when I first started knitting and I went to a store and, you know, you fall in love with one skein and you buy that one and you have no plan for it. I've never actually really bought a sweater quantity of yarn without a project in mind, um, which is, I don't know whether that's something I would like to start doing or not. I think really I just much prefer to buy the yarn for a project specifically. I don't like to just hold on to yarn. So I had this yarn in my stash and I knew it wasn't something that I liked necessarily anymore. It's not my style of, of yarn or color, that sort of thing. And then sort of on top of that was, I kind of didn't really feel very inspired for things to make, especially we had a really sweltering hot summer here uh, in Sydney. It was a really bad one and I just didn't have that motivation to wanna, I don't know, there was nothing that was calling to me. So I thought, okay, the best thing I can do then is take yarn that I'm not in love with, use patterns that I've already bought and then make things for charity. We have an upcoming winter, you know, there are people in need. So I made this here, this shawl, um, which I think is called Destination Unknown. The name of the designer is completely blanking on me. I will put it um, below, of course, and maybe across the screen. And I used the Cascade Heritage Wave um, Christmas Edition sock yarn, sock yarn. Um, so it obviously transitions from the red down into the green, as you can see. And I used um, a local yarn store's um, house brand, one which is the Morrison Sons Empire in a sort of um, creamy color. It's a leftover from the shawlography I knit for my mother. And it is a mosaic shawl. So if I maybe do a close up, that's the wrong side. And then that's the right side. So if you're interested in doing color work but you're not confident knitted, knitting two-handed, uh, Mosaic is a really great option for that. And yeah, I found this very fun. I find Mosaic charts really hard to read. I think I've just never really dedicated the time to learning how to read them. So I just followed the written instructions. I found that much more straightforward. But um, yes, not too much to say about that. I made some slight modifications because I was running out of yarn pretty rapidly. The whole idea was just to use up the heritage wave, which is obviously the green to red, and just knit till I had no more of that. What I didn't expect to do was to run out of the base color so quickly. Uh, I had one whole ball left over and I thought that would get me most of the way, but obviously with shawls, as the stitch count gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you run out of yarn faster and faster and faster. So I think I had to swap it quite a few times. I ended up having to buy several more balls just to sort of finish it. Um, and I did a bit of an, a, a different um, border sort of cast off just to um, just based off the amount of yarn I had left. So yes, that is the Destination Unknown shawl that I knit up um, and will be donating to charity. Then the second shawl I did, um, once again, as a charity knit, I haven't um, weaved in my ends, so please don't judge me for it, but it is a shawlography, which is once again using a her um, heritage, 
the Cascade Heritage Wave. Um, I think this one was called Pressed Flowers. Um, it's a much more subtle change. So you can see, I guess here, there's sort of more blues and then purples, but it's pretty mild. Um, and then for the main color, I used the Bendigo Woolen Mills Tranquility again, but I used it in, and the color is escaping me, but it's, it, when I received it, it came out looking a lot more lilac than I was expecting. And that's just not my coloring, but it paired perfectly with the Cascade. Once again, I just knit till I ran out of yarn, um, which happened around here. And so I decided to just sort of fudge <laughs> a, um, a border and I just did a Pico bind off here. Which I think is kind of cute. This really reminds me of a sea urchin. It's very sea urchin e, especially with the um, Pico bind off. I think it's very cute. So. That was the second one that I've done. That was a very quick speed run of what I've had on my needles, what's off my needles. But let me have a little bit of a chat about what I currently have on my needles. So I'm knitting two things at the moment. The first one is the basic raglan pullover by Hoogie Locatelli. I think that's what the name of the pattern is. And I'm knitting this in Juniper Moon Farms Harriet. Oh my gosh. It is stunning. It is amazing, this yarn. It's 100% alpaca. Get a bit closer. So what inspired me to cast this on is that I made one for my boyfriend. Actually, that's another exciting announcement if you haven't noticed. Um, my boyfriend and I got engaged, which is very, very exciting. Um, but I made this for him a few years ago when he was my boyfriend, before he was my fiance. Um, and I made it in the Rowan, ooh, is it called the Baby Soft Alpaca? Super Soft Alpaca DK? Mm. It's a, definitely a Rowan yarn. It's a blend of virgin wool and alpaca. And it's so soft, it's just so divine. And I've, I've kind of stolen it from him. I've been wearing it all winter. I feel really bad. <laughs> He's been very gracious and has been letting me use it. Um, so I thought I should really make one of my own. So I found um, the alpaca worked really well with this design. I was originally thinking of doing the, is it called the Stranded Sweater by Strike and Knit? I think, oh, I'm really sorry if I'm getting that mixed up. Once again, everything down below, everything down below. <laughs> but that was the Stranded Cardigan, or sorry, Stranded Sweater. And I loved the pattern on it. It was this sort of, I've done a little swatch of it really cute. This is not the right yarn weight or needle size, but I just wanted to get an idea of sort of how it would look. The only thing is because the yarn is alpaca, I wasn't sure how well this would translate into alpaca. I also wasn't sure because the sweater is knit um, bottom up because alpaca, while it's very drapey, it has no give and it was quite a f quite fitted at the waist. And I just didn't know what would be the issue, if there would be an issue rather, if I cast on and the cast on was really, it was just not stretchy. And I just thought, I love that design. I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna wait to knit it out of 100% wool. Maybe the um, Sanders Garn Pigint, I think would be really good. Um, or any sort of other DK weight uh, yarn. But I just wanted something simple, and because I'd knit this one by Hoki Locatelli before, I just thought, you know what, that'll that'll work well. I know it works well with alpaca. I've done it. Um, I kind of like the fit of his on me, even though the design is a crew neck. Because I'm wearing his size, it kind of ends up looking almost like a boat neck on me. I, I don't know. I just think it's a really cool neckline. So what I did is I actually cast on for his size, which is the medium, but then I only increased out to the smallest size so that it's not gonna be really deep in the yoke on me. It doesn't look like a boat neck at the moment, uh, but obviously once you get more weight on it, it's alpaca, you can see. It's going to, it's gonna stretch out. This yarn is heavenly. I cannot rave about it enough. It's quite easy to find. I actually ended up buying it up in a yarn store 
um, on the north coast, sort of mid-north coast um, in Australia, in a town called... Bellingen, in a town called Bellingen. It's a really cute little yarn store. I will put it below um, if you're ever going through there. Bellingen's a really cool town to visit. Um, so definitely check it out if you're a knitter and you're in the area. But yes, beautiful yarn, very simple pattern, really easy to follow. There is, however, one maths error in it, which it doesn't look like they've updated the pattern with that, um, which I find really funny, but I thought that they did. Maybe it's just the one I, I didn't download the, latest, the most recent version, perhaps. Um, despite that one little error, it is a very straightforward, very easy pattern to follow. Um, very classic, so um, the only thing that's maybe slightly difficult if you've never done it before is there is some short rows, German short rows, along the back. That's about it. The only other modification I made is twisted rib to the collar, and I did a... Um, tubular cast on. I feel like I'm, everyone's doing it, it's just, it's a hot thing, it's fun, so yes, that is my just raglan pullover. Just sort of chipping away at it. Winter is coming to an end in Australia, so it's, by the time I finish it, I'm not even really going to need it. I barely even need it now, to be honest, but you got to keep your hands busy. So another exciting thing that happened recently, aside from the engagement, is that a local yarn store did a call out asking for sample knitters. And I've done quite a bit of test knitting, but I've never done sample knitting before. And just the idea of being able to be paid to knit is a dream come true. And I just think it's, I don't know, so amazing that they've done the call out um, and the group of women that they've got together are all just incredible and so enthusiastic and really supportive. And what I'm knitting on at the moment is the Mara Shawl by Madeline Tosh. And I'm knitting it in Tosh DK, which I've never knit with before. You can sort of get this out. I'm not usually a hand-dyed yarn person. Um, generally because I'm also not a superwash yarn person either. But this is delightful. Um, it's not 100% my thing, but I can totally see why it has a cult following. This is a really simple triangle shawl. It's just in garter. So as you can see, perfect TV knitting. Um, it's gonna take three skeins of this. So I've gotten this far through the first one. And then sort of just for comparison. So that is what I'm knitting up. Um, it's not on my Ravelry page yet but I'm sure once the finished project is completed, it will be. Very simple knit. If you've never done a shawl before, I think this is a really fun one and something that you can just pick up and put down um, and not worry about it because it's super simple repeat, um, really, really mindless, very fun. So my camera is flashing at me and I think I don't, I don't have much battery left. So I'm gonna leave it there so I don't get cut off. But I just want to say it was so lovely to catch up again. I always love reading your comments. And as I say every single time, thank you for your patience. I'm, I'm sorry I can't put this out as regularly as I would like to. I am 